Joining me now is Senator Tom Cotton, who sits on the Senate Select Committee on Intel and the Judiciary Committee. Senator, um, from your position on your committees, your thoughts on this reporting tonight out of multiple sources regarding Merrick Garland, Hunter Biden, the laptop, and the coordination of this letter that was then used in that 2020 debate by Joe Biden to blow off this concern about this laptop and what was in it. Well, Laura, my, my main thoughts are I'm very glad that Jim Jordan, my old friend in the House, is the chairman of the Judiciary Committee so we can get to the bottom of it. Because I don't think Dick Durbin on the Senate Judiciary Committee is going to be probing this. But they're very troubling reports that the IRS and the FBI have been thwarted from investigating Hunter Biden's dealings, which, as you say, are not about Hunter Biden, a very troubled but private citizen. They're how the Biden family has been trading on Joe Biden's public office for 50 years. In other investigations, you have Jim Comer and his committee reviewing the suspicious activity reports at the Treasury of money transfers involving the Biden family. Again, not just Hunter, but other members of the family. More troubling information appears to be coming out there that Joe Biden has been using his public office for 50 years to benefit his family. And if he did it when he was a senator and he did it when he was vice president, do we really think he wouldn't do it when he held the highest land in the office? Well, if Garland and Ray, um, Ray being the head of the FBI, have been sitting on this you know, completed investigation, IRS work is completed, the FBI work is completed, now for more than a year. <laughs> What's yeah, the delay? I think the truth is going to come out. I think that's why, you, that's why you're starting to see whistleblowers come out, because in my experience, law enforcement officers of all types, whether they're federal, state, or local, are extremely, extremely frustrated whenever their investigations are obstructed. Whatever their personal politics may be, they've dedicated their life to law enforcement and they want to be able to do their job. And if you have political appointees in the Department of Treasury or the Department of Justice who are preventing them from pursuing what are fairly straightforward cases, Hunter Biden's crimes or potential crimes are not some kind of massive corporate conspiracy that takes years and years to yeah. roll up. If they're sitting on those and not letting it come out, then I, I'm confident, especially with the leadership of Jim Jordan in the House, that all these facts are going to come to light. Now, imagine if the Republicans didn't have the House of Representatives. This just would continue to be buried. Now, The Washington Post is reporting tonight, Senator Cotton, that Joe Biden is preparing to announce his reelection campaign next week, and aides are looking to release a video on Tuesday declaring the president's bid to return to the White House. Does some of this news that has emerged just in the last 24 hours, in your estimation, could that change this calculation by the Bidens that the green light is on? I don't know, Laura. You know, I, I've thought for a while that Joe Biden was gearing up to run for re-election, though he keeps delaying his announcement. When he did things like actually sign our law that overturns D.C.'s radical pro-criminal uh, ordinance, or when he finally allowed oil and gas exploration in the Willow Project in northern Alaska. These are things he never would have done in his first two years office as he was tacking to the far left. So I've kind of thought he was running for re-election for a while now. But of course, if he does go forward with running for re-election and all these facts come to light, you're going to have the kind of reckoning in public that we did not have in 2020 because of Biden campaign efforts to suppress information about Hunter Biden, to spread lies to the media, which happily carried water for Joe Biden in their efforts to defeat Donald Trump. And quickly, Senator, the White House uh, seemed to be begging now, begging and begging China for a meeting, um, and they can't get any answers. So they sent their pit bull to Johns Hopkins to deliver a message. We seek a constructive and fair economic relationship with China. We do not seek to decouple our economy from China's. We seek a healthy economic relationship with China one that fosters growth and innovation in both countries. A growing China that plays by international rules is good for the United States and the world. <laughs> China and international rules, Senator. How's yeah. that working out in the South China Seas? I mean, or how's that working out for Taiwan or the Uyghurs or the trade yeah. cheating that they've done for decades? 
Well, it's like they turned back the clock 10 years when Barack Obama was in office and we we're celebrating China as our partner. But, you know, that's what, who Joe Biden is and that's who he's always been. You know, in the 2020 campaign, he was saying that China is not a competitor to us. We should seek to decouple our economies in strategic ways from China's economy because it gives them leverage over us. We should be standing up to their confrontations uh, with our friends in places like Taiwan or their threats to other neighbors. We should make it clear that we will not allow them to set the rules for global travel or trade, that we're finally, that we have finally turned the page on 30 years of failed policy in Washington, and we intend not to back down again. But you heard that clip from Secretary Yellen, which begging. is just pathetic. No, Rushing after is. China, begging for meetings, <laughs> begging for it. Next, they're gonna trot out John Kerry, begging for a meeting about climate change agreements. No, it is just, they're getting ghosted by China. Like, please pay attention to me. All right, Senator, great to see you tonight.